Welcome to the More Podcast with Ava and Najee, where we are manifesting original rich bitch experiences. Each week, we bring you travel reviews, wellness advice, and general millennial musings with a level of refinement. What level? It fucking depends. Hey, Najee, how are you? Hey, Ava, I am totally hanging in there. How are you feeling? hanging in there this is our second take on today's recording working through some mercury pre-shadow bullshit but here Mm -hmm. we are here we are i'm gonna say if this is an indication how this mercury retrograde is gonna go i'm just a little bit nervous (laughs) just a little bit uh same it's been it's been a week, that's for sure. Oh. Absolutely. So much is going on. But you know what? We're here. And, you know, we're going to keep it pushing because that's what we do. That's, that's what, what we, we do. do. The show must go on. <laughs> we're like, it is Labor Day. We are recording. Whether or not the Wi Fi is keeping up with us, it better catch up because we have some books to share. Yes, we have lots of books to share. Well, Ava, why don't you tell the people what we're talking about today? Okay. So today we are doing a roundup of our favorite self-development books. So similar to the format we did for our favorite self-care tools, we are going to share some of the books that we are loving um, that have helped us on our self-development journeys. Yay. Should be super fun. Yes. So I have five books. Najee, you have five books, and I think we should just get into them. Let's go ahead and share the title of the book, the author, the description, and what we took away from reading them. Sounds good. Ava, why don't we start off with your first book? Okay. Well, it was hard to narrow down into just five, which is a funny thing for me to say because I feel like I don't, like I don't really think of myself as like a super reader, but I definitely go in phases of reading books. I don't know about you, but it's like when I'm consuming the book content, I am consuming. So maybe I'll read like Mm -hmm. two or three books in a row. And then I kind of pause and like, I don't feel like reading right now. But these books I've collected from a more recent time frame. So I would say these are books that I've all read and enjoyed in the last call it like two-ish years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So with that lens, the first book that I wanted to bring to the table is called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And Mm -hmm. this book description is The Power of Now, A Guide to Spiritual Enlightenment. The Power of Now is a spiritual self-help guide to help us discover our true being, release our pain, and find deeper inner peace. When we are intensely present in the now, we respond from deep consciousness and flow with ease and joy in life. Now, this book was a total mind bender for me. When I picked it up, like I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And Eckhart Tolle, he's a really, really powerful spiritual teacher. Um, And I feel like once I read this book, my first book of his, it was easier for me to then read um, A New Earth, which is another book that he's written. But the thing about this book is it really just speaks to being in the present moment. And it helped me realize how much of my time I had spent living in the past and in the future. Mm -hmm. So, and I think all of us do that a lot. Like it's just part of human Mm -hmm. nature Mm -hmm. where it's like, we're either dwelling in the past or we're worrying about the future And the thing about this book is it literally just reminds you time and time and time again that the present moment is literally the only thing we have. So in the Mm -hmm. way that the future doesn't exist yet, (laughs) and it's not promised, and also the past doesn't exist either, like that, you know, it's, it's no longer, coming into that present moment and 
training yourself to, to do that has been a really helpful tool for me. And I think especially over the last couple of years where there feels to be a heightened sense of like unknown and just everyone's just in this place of like, what, what's going on here on this planet earth? Like what's happening? Um, coming back to the present moment and really training myself to be mindful of that has been very helpful. So this is a book where you can read maybe like one or two pages at a time. And then you're like, okay, what does that mean? Like you'll think about it for a long time. (laughs) So it's not something that you can plow through in like a weekend. I think it took me several months to read this book, but I highly recommend Mm -hmm. it. It is definitely a mind changer in terms of looking at a new perspective. And if you know, you're someone who struggles with like anxiety, like a lot of that comes from like thinking about the future. Right. Or if you're, Like, I think it's just so helpful to train yourself to be present. And so that is my top pick for books right now, Mm. because it really did, it did open a new lens for me in all aspects of life. Ooh, love that. I feel like it really connects with the conversation we had a couple weeks ago around human design and just kind of like getting out of your mind and really sitting within your spirit and within your heart because mm-hmm. it's really your mind that lives in the future and in the past when yeah. you really get into like what is your heart saying what is your spirit saying your heart and your spirit are grounded in the right here right now it's existing right here in the moment so mm-hmm. i think that is definitely telling as far as a lot of the things that kind of like help us be our better selves mm-hmm. and a lot of that stuff kind of sits with living in the here and now and not going into the crazy places your mind wants to take it especially for overthinkers like ourselves yeah i mean that concept is a game changer and i'm definitely looking forward to digging into the power of now a little bit more to see what else can i learn about it like how what other tips can i kind of use to just stay in the present because listen that future in the past where your mind tries to take you We'll send you on a whirlwind to the point where you just want to take a nap and then you get nothing done. (laughs) Yes. It is a really nice thing just to have on hand too, because you can kind of just like flip open a page and just remind yourself to stay in the present because it is so like intentionally repetitive that it's kind of nice to just be like, oh, flip it open, whatever page it is, and just like reread a section of it. And it kind of drops you right back into that. So you nailed it in terms of just having that tool on hand. Awesome. What's your first book? So my first book is a classic. Most of these books that have made my list I've read over the past few years, except for this one. Okay. So my first book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Ooh. A classic book by Robert Kiyosaki that was first published back in 1997. Okay. I actually read about it like maybe almost 10 years ago now. And most of you have probably heard of this book, but it basically advocates the importance of financial literacy, financial independence, and building wealth through investing in assets, real estates, and businesses. Mm -hmm. Now, the book chronicalizes Robert's life through the relationship between his two dads, his biological father, um, who basically just worked living paycheck to paycheck to provide a living for him and his family, and his rich dad, who is actually his father's dad, who taught him basically how to make money work for him and how to kind of like build upon, you know, his money, create wealth investments, real estate, and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say it was a game changer for me because previously I didn't know much about financial literacy. Um, and I feel like most of us <laughs> in America that grow up in the working class don't know much about it, don't know mm-hmm. much about you know assets, real estates, investments, and just really how to u- make your money make money for you. So that was kind of my first introduction 
um, into the world of financial literacy. And I'll say it definitely stayed with me, definitely stayed with me. And it always kind of just let me know that there is another way. Um, And I think a lot of those conversations are happening a lot more now that information is just being spread at an astronomical rate, primarily through social media and other online avenues. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's interesting to see that this book from 97, which kind of blew me away because, again, I just picked up the book 10 years ago. But to know it preceded Mm -hmm. that by (laughs) 15 years ish. Um, was really, really interesting. Yeah. So definitely a game changer for me Ooh. and just always kind of lets me know that there are other ways to make money and create a living for yourself than working all the time. Yeah, I have. So I have not read that book, but I I hear about it all the time. And I think my dad had it on his bookshelf in, in our house growing up. And so <laughs> I definitely have the awareness of that book and I haven't read it. So Perhaps this is my nudge to read it. And um, I agree with you. It's like we aren't taught things like that in school, you know, like we're not taught how to work smarter, (laughs) not harder in terms of where to put our money, because I think so much of society is still on just this capitalism train of like, we need you to be employees and work and work and work and work until you're 65 and then you can live for a couple years and it's like "Mm, or not (laughs) or not or not there has to be a better way so that's cool that you picked that up 10 years ago absolutely I just think it was so interesting seeing kind of like the dichotomy between the two fathers one who was a third generation you know Japanese immigrant to the United States still trying to make a living for his family and then his other father who was actually his friend's father who you know probably came from money um and had this financial knowledge already so it's it's a lot of different sub themes in there but the overall theme is just really financial literacy um and i definitely am an advocate for that just across the board yes highly recommend all right ava let's get into your second book okay my second book is called Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forleo. Mm-hmm. And its description is Let's be honest, and none of us were given an owner's manual at birth. If you're having trouble solving a problem or making a dream happen, it, the problem isn't you. It's not that you're not hardworking, intelligent, or deserving, but that you haven't yet installed this one key belief that will change everything. My mom, who has the tenacity of a bulldog and curses like a truck driver, explained it to me this way. Nothing in life is that complicated. You can do whatever you set your mind to if you just roll up your sleeves, get in there, and do it. Everything is figure outable. Whether you want to leave a dead-end job, break an addiction, learn to dance, heal a relationship, grow a business, master your money, travel the globe, or solve world hunger... Everything is figure outable will train your brain to think more creatively and positively, especially in the face of setbacks. Yay. So I love Marie Forleo. She's a marketer. She has, she created B school, which is sort of like one of the pinnacle like examples of an online course. She was kind of one of the first people to create a marketing course online but I think she does a lot of great content. And so I picked up this book in 2020 and 2020 was a year that I actually read like a few books. I'm like, look at me with all this spare time (laughs) I'm reading so productive, Um, and pretending that life isn't falling apart. Um, But this book for me was one of the motivators for me to finally resign from my corporate career. Mm -hmm. And the content specifically that got me to that point, there's a chapter, there's a section in the book where um, Marie talks about another book, which I think is called The Top Five or Seven Regrets of the Dying, um, which was written by someone who spent a lot of time in, you know, whether it was like nursing homes or hospitals and people's last moments of life and essentially collected these patterns or themes of the top things that people were regretting. And 
that was kind of the thing where I was like, oh shit, you know, if, if this, if this whole thing, this whole life was up tomorrow, like what would I be sitting here regretting right now? And I actually made a list. Like I wrote out a list because this book also includes like do this exercise now. So it's very tactical in that way. Um, But I wrote out my list. And one of those things that came to the top of the list was not giving my consultancy like a full shot. So I've had an LLC for like seven years now and I was doing a lot of side projects. But when I was employed full time, I didn't really have that motivation to give it my all. And Mm -hmm. so this book and this exercise actually got me to the point where I'm like, man, I'm going to try it. (laughs) Like I'm going to go. And so it was very instrumental in me taking the leap into my next chapter of entrepreneurship. But overall, it's just like very motivating, very exciting. Um, She's got a ton of personality. If you've ever seen Marie Forleo, like on video, it's like (laughs) she's a Jersey girl and she brings the enthusiasm. Yes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So like that's all I had to say. You're like, I can see it now. Um, Yeah, say less. (laughs) Say less. (laughs) But I'm I think it's a really girl. great read and it is just a very positive, motivating, uplifting book, not in a way where it's like you end up feeling shitty, like, man, I should be doing more, but it really is kind of like a raw, raw, motivating, like, cool, let's do this thing. I love that. Now, here's a question. Yeah. Did the themes from this book inspire you to pursue your most recent trek to London? Oh, That's a good question. I feel like that didn't drop in for me until maybe a year after I read the book. Mm -hmm. So if I read that book two years ago, I think my London dream dropped in like a year ago. But I do think just in general, the mindset building Mm -hmm. definitely helped. And I think that's a theme in all the books that I'm bringing to the table. It's like, they are really focused on mindset and you even mentioned it earlier, but it's like, that is so, so important to everything else. Um, because the mind is so powerful, you know, and it's like, we have to train, we have to train our minds to function in the way we'd prefer because it's so easy to sidetrack and derail and get you know, sucked into the news cycle or whatever it is. And so I think it definitely helped me from a mindset perspective, but I hadn't thought about it in that Mm -hmm. context until now. Awesome. That's so funny because it's going to segue perfectly into my next book. Okay. um, Which is called Keep Sharp, Build a Better Brain at Any Age by Dr. Sanjay Gupta. There you go. Keep Uh, Sharp. So this book... (laughs) Like this book was published in 2021, I believe, by CNN chief medical correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And it's basically just a book about how to keep your brain young, healthy, and sharp. And he uses a lot of science-driven guides to how to protect it from neurological decline. So I kind of picked this book up because my ex's father had suffered from dementia in his final years. So I've Mm -hmm. always found like neurological diseases kind of interesting, Mm -hmm. but I've also always been curious on ways to kind of keep sharp and how to really understand the inner workings of the brain to kind of help control that mindset. And I think this book really gave some great insight into how the brain works it debunked some common myths associated with the brain and how it develops. And it also kind of just outlines five core pillars on how to keep a sharp mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Spoil alert, they're super, super easy. Okay. It's basically exercise, applying new hobbies and activities, getting enough rest and relaxation, a healthy diet, and a very diverse social network. Um, mm. And... Honestly, it really is like that simple. If we can really be dedicated to, I would say those five pillars, because I think you kind of need all of them in a sense. Um, And I think the diverse social network is definitely an important one because 
being able to be around people that have different experiences and different outlooks on life and different backgrounds definitely helps you keep things into perspective. And it keeps your mind thinking and working and jumping. And for me, it's always been kind of inspiring to um, connect with a lot of different people because Mm -hmm. it makes me want to do more. It makes me want to try for more. It makes me want to kind of think a little bit differently, think a little bit more creatively um, and really try my best to solve those new problems um, that might come. So keep sharp. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sanjay Gupta definitely was a game changer for me. Um, And it just keeps me thinking about ways to keep my mind active and not let it rot. And that's something I'm going to have to keep for the rest of my life. But I think having those initial building blocks, like you said earlier, Mm -hmm. um, helps to build the mindset to always want to change things up and, um, you know, just stay on top of things. Yeah. I like that um, they specify a diverse social network because I feel like I've heard, you know, like spending time with others is important, but there is something to that diverse network. And it doesn't surprise me knowing that it was written in 2021, like after we saw so much Mm -hmm. like um, division and siloing and canceling of people because of different viewpoints. Like it seems like that makes a lot of sense that the author would bring that perspective in because it is true, but it's like, wow, like we're living in a time where it's like people don't want to have diverse um, networks, which is so bizarre, you know? Absolutely. I think that's probably why I thought that might have been the most important pillar to me only because Mm -hmm. it allows you to see and understand that there's no one way towards success or there's no one way towards achieving your goals and your dreams. There's a lot of different ways to do it and there's a lot of different ways to think about it. So um, it, it really helped me to remember to be nimble and be adaptable when it comes to solving problems and trying new things because you just never know what could happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I feel like after this podcast, we're all going to be like reading these other recommendations because now I'm oh, two absolutely. for two. You know, You've I'm got me list. sold. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my next book is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. Mm-hmm. And this book, that cover says, I've written this book to share what I know with you, my readers. It incorporates portions of my little book, Heal Your Body, which has become widely accepted as an authoritative work on the mental patterns that create diseases in the body. If you do the exercises and you can heal your life progressively as they appear, by the time you finish, you will have begun to change your life. I suggest you read through the book, then slowly read it again, but this time do each exercise in depth. If you can, work through the exercises with a friend or family member. Know that when you work with these ideas, my loving support is with you. Okay, so that doesn't seem to be the actual description. However, um, the gist of this book, and this is what I mean, it's like, I thought reading the cover would be like the description, but there's so much marketing on these book jackets that yeah, we don't really but, know. I mean, it works. <laughs> so wait, in that description that you wrote, that yeah. you read, did you say dis-eases? Mm-hmm. So the intentionality of disease, but breaking it up. So D-I-S hyphen E-A-S-E-S. So, so deep. This, yes. So that's basically the premise here is that um, we create disease in the body emotionally. Mm -hmm. And so this is really about taking extreme responsibility for the state of your life. And uh, Louise Hay, she shares her story at the very end of the book. But I mean, she had healed herself from cancer. Like, big things. And so it just, it's a totally new perspective on, um, you know, it's alternative health. And so it's really a new perspective on 
why we have some of the ailments we have. So for instance, me, I, as a child had asthma, but like, if I go back and think about it, I actually didn't have my first asthma attack until I was 13. So in a sense, I wasn't born with this, right? Like it was a dis-ease that I developed in the first 13 years of my life. And so this whole book is a very fascinating exercise in terms of going back through. And there's actually a whole um, section in the back that's like, lists basically a disease and um, her perspective of the emotional source and then affirmations to break the thought cycle that essentially creates it. So it's really, really interesting. And I've done this, like I've tried friends of mine when they're like, oh, like I'm, I feel like I have this right now or like this weird, I have this weird rash after going to Hawaii, (laughs) like for example. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll flip to the page that says rash and I'll read it. And then, you know, whoever's on the receiving end of whatever I'm testing out, they're like, yeah, that hits. So it's a really, really interesting read. And I've read it twice. And at some point I'll read it a third time. But it's just Mm -hmm. a really, really cool book. And I feel like that's just been part of my healing journey in terms of, you know, we've talked about like acupuncture and getting off of prescription medications and all sorts of things. And this book has been like one element of that health Mm -hmm. journey for me, but it's really, really cool. I love that. I think one thing that's super interesting just about alternative health and alternative medicine overall is that it really does have those healing properties in the physical realm as well. But even so, I think just applying some of those mindset behaviors can definitely change your body spiritually and emotionally as well. Mm -hmm. So even if you still have, you know, whatever dis-ease that might be plaguing the body, I've definitely seen kind of like adapting those more positive mindsets help either ease that pain or just create an easier way of dealing with it long term. And I've definitely seen that in some of my loved ones as well, mm. which has inspired me to just always try to kind of keep positive and um, kind of think about the healing until it actually manifests whenever something goes wrong. Yeah. Yes. That manifestation, that's what we're all about. Amen. Preach. Okay. So my third book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. I love that book. I've read it. (laughs) A Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life by Mark Manson. So the cover is bright. It's orange. It's a little vulgar. Uses the word fuck. Um, (laughs) It's definitely eye-catching. The marketing is there. But... Overall, I found it to be a very interesting, I like to call it an interesting anti-self-help book (laughs) that kind of calls out the self-help industry for toxic positivity, if you will. And it kind of just pushes people to accept and embrace life's trials and tribulations. And it kind of led me to really kind of discover things that have deep meaning to me and really divert my energy into those things that I can control and focus on things that I actually do give a fuck about instead Mm -hmm. of things that like are so abstract that you really shouldn't even be thinking too much about it, such as the past and the future. Yeah. So I think that's another (laughs) kind of tool that has me thinking about like staying in the moment, really focusing on things that you can control the here and now your thoughts and feelings around things um, and your own actions Mm -hmm. and really uh, not trying to tie something back to a bigger meaning. Cause sometimes it really is. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like it, maybe it's not karma. Maybe it's not like a bump on the next journey to your great. Maybe it's just something that's shitty that happened right here and now. And you just have to learn to deal with it and then you move on. (laughs) And I've had to kind of like internalize that concept quite a few times when dealing with some of the trials and tribulations through life. And it actually helped me get over it quicker. (laughs) It's just like, okay, 
what's the problem? What's the solution? Let's move on. Because that really, that's what life is, I think, overall. Just a string of highs, lows, trials, and tribulations, and creative problem solving. <laughs> right. Um, so it was very fun, I'd say. So I actually have that book underneath my mic right now. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I wanted to pull it up and be like, we have matching books, but I also don't want to make a lot of noise on my microphone, but I literally have that one sitting here too, <laughs> which is so funny. Twinsies. Twinning. We do have a book that we overlapped. I mean, I didn't share it, but that's cute for us. I love that. Um, I love it. Side note. So I asked for that subtle art of not giving a fuck for Christmas. Like I put that book on my Christmas Mm -hmm. list a few years ago thinking like, oh, my grandmother like loves that I'm reading. Like she'll probably want to buy me this book. Um, The title alone, she was like, absolutely not. I'm not buying you that book. Mind you, I'm like a 30 year old woman. (laughs) (laughs) Grandma. (laughs) And so my mom bought it for me and gave it to me. And I remember my grandma was just, she was so irritated about it. And she's like, I think you should care and you should care a lot about things. And I'm like, grandma, you haven't even read the book. <laughs> it's so funny, but oh the title alone for her, she was like, it's a no for me. Um, but my mom gifted it to me anyways. And it was kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's a part of marketing. <laughs> it, it, it elicited a strong reaction for her. Exactly. You know, one way or the other. But you, I don't know, like you literally can't give a fuck about everything because then no. you go crazy. So exactly, exactly. <sighs> so my next book is a financial book. It's not Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, mm. but it's a nice compliment. So it's called A Happy Pocket Full of Money, Infinite oh, Wealth and Abundance in the Here and Now by David Cameron Gikandi. And this is one of the more recent reads I've had. It is, um, so it says, it's not just about the money. True wealth is not about buckets of cash. True wealth is not about designer clothes. It is not about a new Mercedes. It is not about living in a palatial estate. True wealth is about discovering value within yourself and value within other people. It is about a kind of conscious living that incorporates gratitude, a belief in abundance, and the experience of joy. So this book is something that I started reading after my first year of entrepreneurship because I was having a lot of moments of questioning my worth, um, and Mm. self-worth is directly tied to money in my experience and just in terms of what I was earning and charging as a entrepreneur and there's all sorts of shit coming up for me. And so this book is really great and I particularly love that. So it actually has a lot of um, (laughs) physics in it in a specific chapter, but it gets into, you know, like law of attraction and some other really interesting topics. But what I loved most was that like, he just addresses and cements the fact that money is not real. And I think that is such a powerful understanding because it's like we as a society have literally fabricated a piece of paper that we've attributed a value to. Mm -hmm. And once you get past that and you're like, it's actually like monopoly, you know, it's not real. And so (laughs) there's a certain relationship that I think can unfold when you can view like literal money as something that's just like a tool and it's almost like a game that we kind of play to be like inhabited on this planet at this time. It's just a Mm -hmm. really, really interesting way to reframe. And that one helped me a lot in terms of coming back into my power and feeling like, you know, I'm, I'm not only acknowledging, but I'm really owning my worth and I feel comfortable charging a rate that's equivalent to that belief. And so I really liked it. And at the end of like every 
kind of thought or chapter, there's um, an affirmation and it's, I am wealth, I am abundance, I am joy. So like that's something you kind of repeat Mm -hmm. throughout the entire reading of the book. And that's an affirmation that I still use. And so I liked that one. Mm, Abundance and joy. I definitely resonate with that. Yeah. Is this a book that you will recommend anyone that is in their first foray into entrepreneurship or trying anything new? I would definitely recommend for anyone who's trying something new um, and even anyone who's just kind of struggling with, you know, financial matters, I think now to even just as the economy kind of goes into more of a recessional phase, I think there's a lot of fear that gets thrown around and, you know, there's a lot of kind of conversation that could cause anxiety. And so I think this book, it'd be a perfect time to read this book for anyone who's feeling like maybe a little anxious about the economic forecast. Um, It could provide Mm -hmm. some new perspective and some affirmations. Yeah. I think how, I think learning about how this book helped you on your entrepreneurial journeys um, is definitely inspiring. I think this next book that I have can definitely add to that. Um, And it's called Brave, Not Perfect by Reshma Saljani. I love this book. So Reshma, Reshma is basically the founder and CEO of a national nonprofit called Girls Who Code. Okay, I've heard of I that. first learned about her. Yeah, I first learned about her at a conference that I attended where she was a keynote speaker and she told us about her story career, which included a failed attempt at the U.S. House of Representatives. Mm. Um, but her book basically just outlines how society teaches boys to be brave and how society teaches girls to be perfect. Um, so while citing a study done by the University of California that involves salt and lemonade, she challenges girls to break out of that perfect bubble and to take risks. She wants girls to show out, to be seen, try new things. Um, And I think the overall message for this particular book is that there's beauty and failure and there's joy in rejection. Mm. Um, And I feel like for this particular book, although the core audience is obviously girls of any age, I feel like I took so much out of this book because... um, for most of my life, I feel like I've tried extra hard to be like kind and passive and accommodating. Um, and it's just recently that I'm really kind of learning to use my voice, as I say to myself 10 times a day, um, and really kind of just speak up a little bit more. So I think reading this book really kind of helped me get a little bit more comfortable with being able to fail or come up short. Um, And it got me a little bit more comfortable with the idea of either rejection or kind of like maybe an adverse response to something. Mm. Um, This definitely helped um, kind of, it definitely helped me use my voice a little bit more and be less afraid of the consequences. So whenever I want to try something new, I'm, a little less hesitant because I think at the end of the day, it's more impressive if you tried something and failed rather than not have tried at all. Yeah. That's really interesting. I've definitely heard of girls who code and the, and that movement. And so I love that. I love to know that she's authored a book. Like that's pretty cool. I'm sure I would like to vibe with that one too. I'm like, damn, this reading list is getting long. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I definitely recommend this book for anyone who's just like a little bit nervous about failing or rejection or anything like that because at the end of the day I think Reshma definitely hit the nail on the head it's definitely better to live a life loudly 
and then learn from a lot of those mistakes and missteps, then try to live a life that is, I don't know, I would say maybe covered or quieted or a life that doesn't necessarily rock the boat where you're not living your fullest potential. So I definitely Mm -hmm. resonate with a lot of the messages in this one. Mm. I really like that. Well, my last book that I'll bring to the table for today is called The Universe Has Your Back by Gabby Bernstein. And Gabby Bernstein is another um, individual who creates a lot of awesome content. She's got a really strong YouTube channel and podcast. Um, I think she's actually written like nine books, but this is the first book of hers that I've actually read. Um, And so The Universe Has Your Back, Transform Fear to Faith um, through acceptance, surrender, and a commitment to her continually evolving spiritual path. Gabrielle Bernstein has been transforming her fear into faith. Her stories and universal lessons provide a framework for releasing the blocks to what everyone longs for most, happiness, security, and clear direction. These lessons can help us relinquish the need to control in order to relax into a sense of a certainty and freedom to stop chasing life and truly live. So this one I definitely picked up for my London journey because I feel that I really do believe that the universe has our backs. I do believe that everything works out as it's supposed to. I do believe that we're guided. And at the same time, I think like all of us, there are moments where we question that. Um, Mm. And so I wanted to have this as a resource for those moments in which I was moving through and, and practicing this concept, you know, moving halfway across the world, really following my intuition as it related to like where I should stay, you know, what coffee shop I should bop into, like how I should spend my days and just trusting that everything will unfold the way it should. And at the same time being like, well, I need some backup because again, the mind tries to get in and make you question what you're doing. And um, so this was a resource that I, again, I I attempted to pack it. (laughs) and physically bring it with me but um the luggage weight limits were not allowing for that so um but that's okay I think reading it beforehand definitely helped and um I really love her body of work and so I encourage everyone to check out I think her podcast is called Dear Gabby but she's just got a lot of great things and I think it's all very similar to the theme of what I've shared in terms of just a bit more Mm -hmm. of a spiritual approach to life and having more trust in myself, my own intuition, but also handing over some of that to the universe to say, okay, like I'm willing to work with you and like, let's just, let's go on this journey and a journey that was very different from how I live you know, the first majority of my life. So um, highly recommend that one. I love it. The universe is undefeated. Undefeated. I also love that. I feel like your book picks definitely are more like in the spiritual realm and it feels like very like Aquarian airy. Mm, Yep. And I'm like totally obsessed with that. (laughs) <laughs> when mine are like super earthy I'm like be brave learn about the brain here's some money tips I'm just yeah. there, like okay it's a good balance I love though it. I, I I agree I agree so much oh gosh love us sober Aquarius love us we are sober Aquarius literally <laughs> <laughs> okay so my last book is by someone everyone should know very well and a feather a fellow earth sign and this one is becoming by michelle obama okay yeah now as we know michelle obama was the first lady of the united states for eight years um and she wrote her memoir in 2018 that basically just 
covered her life from when she was a child in Southside Chicago all the way through her years in the White House. Um, and for me, Michelle Obama has always been very relatable in a way that every I feel like everyone felt like they had some type of like Auntie Michelle in their family who was strong and driven and didn't mind speaking their minds and things of that nature. So I feel like I absolutely had to read her book just to learn a little bit more about her. And in reading the book, you really, really get a sense that she's not that different from any other kind of successful and driven female that you have in your life. Like, I have aunts that are very successful women who do not mind like saying how it is and saying what it is and it just felt very homely to me just kind of reading her story but I think the biggest thing that I took from it is that it's never too late to make a change Mm. as we know Michelle Obama started her career out as a lawyer and then she moved into the public sector um and worked trying to help out the little people after she basically just was over <laughs> the whole private lawyer thing that she was doing. Um, but I think at the end of the day, Becoming is really a story about being able to move and navigate through life and not be stuck in one particular phase. We're not trees. If we don't like something or if we don't like where we are in life, whether it be physically or metaphorically, we can move. And I think that message was definitely epitomized in Michelle's memoir. Mm. Um, I think at the end of the day, there's no straight path to your goals or your dreams. And your goals and your dreams can change over time. They might not be what you thought they were. And it's totally okay to switch things up as long as you stay true to yourself and your morals and your values the universe will take you where you need to go and in michelle's case it took her to the white house yeah so i loved it that's that's really powerful just that you know it's okay to change your mind or change your direction or change your goals and i think that kind of feeds into that like it's okay to fail right or quote unquote fail It's like Mm -hmm. we don't have to Mm -hmm. stick to things for longer than we need to just to prove a point, you know? Like, it's okay to change your mind, and I think it's okay to change your path and your direction. And so I think that's a nice, like, end cap to all of the books because I think there's Mm -hmm. definitely a lot of themes pulling through. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, we're all just trying to be more of who we came here to be. And... There's a million different ways to get there, but these yeah. books are really a great tool to give some perspective and support. Yeah, so many good messages. I loved your book list. I loved your book list. Now we have 10 <laughs> books <laughs> that we stand behind that we can offer Absolutely. up to others. So let's get into our love it or leave it for this week then. Do you want to kick us mm-hmm. off, Najee? Absolutely. So I'll tell you this week, I am loving Serena Williams and her very, very extensive and storied career in tennis. Mm. Now she played her final game at the US Open this past week. She didn't win the US Open, but it was an amazing cap on an amazing career. Mm-hmm. that started way back in the 90s. I mean, Serena's been playing for, I mean, almost as long as I've been alive. So it's to be able to kind of look over her career and just see the work and the accomplishments that both her and her sister Venus have made and the impact they've had, not only in tennis, but in just sportsmanship overall, makes me very proud of both of them, actually. Um, and I remember I was watching that final game at the bar and having a few drinks and just kind of reflecting like, wow, what an amazing, amazing career. Um, and both her and her sister just stayed 
so down to earth and humble throughout it all. So loved it. Love Serena. She's everything. What I am leaving this week. <clears throat> I'm leaving behind work drama. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I found myself embroiled in a little bit of like work drama which is not fun because mm-hmm. anyone who knows me knows like I feel like I go out of my way just to be kind to people and in my current role as like a marketing project manager I have to be like cool with everyone and um keep everyone in the loop basically so it's just really tough when stuff like this happens because most of the time I feel like it's just unwarranted. So Mm -hmm. I have been pulling a lot of resources from our discussion last week about managing conflict. Mm -hmm. And I've been using my voice in conjunction with a lot of those tools to navigate some of these issues that I've been experiencing at work. It has not been fun, but it's just another creative solution that I've had to face in the past week just add it to the list of trials and tribulations but we are leaving behind work drama we are leaving that behind and i'm so proud of you because i feel like you've really been applying like everything we're talking about and it's just so it's so beautiful to see like you know even something we've created ourselves can be you know a helpful tool and so I'm sorry that you're having work drama, but also like I'm really excited that you it's like giving you an opportunity to, you know, practice managing conflict and using your voice. And it's just it's all of these conversations in action. So selfishly, it's kind of cool mm-hmm. to see too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't tell you like how proud I am of myself because even just a couple of years ago, I, I probably would have handled this pretty differently. So I'm glad that this platform is allowing us to kind of talk the talk, but walk the walk as well. It's definitely been a journey. Yeah, (laughs) it is a journey. Oh gosh. And the journey continues. (laughs) All right, my dear. (laughs) Tell me, what are you loving and leaving this week? Okay. So this week I am loving uh, a strawberry cake that I baked. So super cute. I hadn't baked anything in like two or three months because I didn't really have a, an equipped kitchen based on my living situations overseas. Um, but I felt like I wanted mm-hmm. to bake a cake and I saw this recipe. It's from Joy the Baker, who I love. She started Drake on Cake, if you're familiar. Oh, so cute. <laughs> so cute. But this strawberry cake was so delicious. It had uh, cream cheese icing and I had a couple of friends over last night. So Kelsey came over and Bridget came over yes. and they shared cake with me. And um, it was just really fun. And I love that. It's always nice to, I love to bake, but like, obviously I don't love to have the results of that baking, like just for myself. It's impossible to eat an entire cake or like, mm-hmm. you know, an entire banana bread mm-hmm. or whatever it is. So I always love. Mm-hmm. when I can make something and share it. Um, so that was a nice little like so long summer strawberry cake moment. Oh, cute. She's a baker. We love that. She's a baker sometimes. And <laughs> <laughs> what I'm not loving though is I've had some issues with cleaning my condo. So I don't know if I told you, Mm. but I was looking to hire someone to clean my place before I moved back into it because I just didn't have the time or the energy to feel like I wanted to do that by myself. Yeah. And so I asked for cleaner recommendations. I pulled my community, got some Mm. recommendations, reached out to one of those recommendations and like just had a total like clusterfuck of an experience. (laughs) The first time they sent over a cleaner, they told me my place would be like, oh, four hours for based on, you know, the size and the state of the the place. They sent over a Mm -hmm. team. They were here for an hour and they left. I came in and literally it looked like nothing had been cleaned. Like there's like dirt on the floors in the kitchen. It was just not clean. So, you know, I took my photographic proof, sent it back to the team and said like, what the hell is this? So like, oh, we'll reschedule you. We'll send someone else out. 
got no showed. Oh no. The cleaners never came. So I just ended up doing it my damn self, like always. No. <laughs> but I'm like, Mercury retrograde pre shadow is really hitting me because this whole week of communications with this cleaning company and, you know, miss miscommunicated whatever the hell happened like it's just been it's been frustrating so i am leaving that behind Mm, i'm sorry that that happened ew i know it's not cute well at least you're back now and you have a clean apartment so that's good i know now i just need to like rest (laughs) for a day it's been non-stop yeah, as we ease into this met- Mercury retrograde, I think rest and relaxation is important. And hopefully by next week, all of our issues will have been solved. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Applesauce. <laughs> I know. Y'all wish us luck. <laughs> In the meantime, thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, just rate and review us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast and tune in every Wednesday to hear the things that make us more us and discover a thing or two to make you more you. See ya. Bye.